Hello and welcome to Climbing Daily. We've all thought about throwing it all in, buying a van and travelling the world climbing, waking up in an amazing location and then moving on when the mood takes us. As well as having one of the best names in climbing, Thomasina Pigeon is living that dream. She's one of Canada's strongest boulders, having climbed multiple V12s. She's also a mother. Her and her daughter travel the world climbing and living this nomadic lifestyle. We caught up with Thomasina to talk about travel, climbing and living the dream. My name is Thomasina Pigeon. Uh, I'm from Newfoundland originally, uh, but I live in Guamish, BC. There's something about bouldering, it's so simple and easy and I like the complexities of the movement. You just can have like such a variety of movements in bouldering that you can't really find so much on in roots, but maybe it's just I haven't tried enough roots to discover that. I live in my van full time and I kind of always have, even before I climbed, I lived in my van. Like right now it's winter time. I'm actually house sitting in a, for a week in Squamish, but after this we go back into our van. And I think the biggest thing about living in the van that's hard is dealing with the cold and not really having a place that where you can like kind of create stuff or work because it's so small. But I love the freedom of the van and I love being able to travel with it and have like have a home on wheels. I think, I think my climbing life definitely changed after having a kid, um, but it didn't change as much as I thought it would. Like I thought I would have to just now be at home, go to school, stay in one place. So when I first had Cedar, I kind of stopped climbing because I didn't know what I was doing. Um, I went home to Newfoundland and stayed with my dad for about five months. And during that time I was kind of contemplating, okay, do I buy a house here and just like kind of stay here and stop climbing or do I try to climb again with the kid and see what that's like. After a year and a half, I decided, okay, we're going, I'm going to climb. I'm going to go back to climbing. And when she was a year and a half, I, we went on our first road trip to Bishop. The biggest challenge was just not having so much support and not having a lot of friends that had kids at that point. So they didn't really understand what I needed as a mother and as a climber and just like to help have support of people around me to help with Cedar. The climbing life doesn't it changes when you have a kid, but it doesn't have to change the way that we would perceive it to change by the norms of society. Um, I kind of make it happen the way I want it to happen, and we homeschool, and Tia comes with me, and I don't know, she has a very, like, uh, a different life than most kids, but she's also really, has a really rich life, and she sees a lot of things. Your time is more focused when you have a kid. Like when you go climbing, you're more focused because you know your time is shorter. Um, but it, it's totally possible. When, when Cedar and I do climb together, like uh, it can be challenging because sometimes I just want to climb and then she'll want to climb and have a spot. And so I definitely have to find, I find myself in another situation where I have to compromise, you know, for another person like, okay, she needs a spot, okay. And then I need to climb. So we try to take turns. Um, but yeah, it's interesting because now that she's a little older and she's more, she's a little bit more focused, she, uh, I, I think it's fair to say that she's definitely a better climber than me. <laughs> 2012, I started competing um, because I needed a change in my own climbing. I wasn't really sure what that would be, but it ended up, be, ended up being comp comps. Um, uh, the relationship with it is kind of a love-hate thing. I kind of, I find them really hard. Um, mentally, like it's really hard for me to just relax and be kind of just be myself in, in that venue. Um, even actually, even when I'm in a gym, I feel slightly off center. Um, but I think this is like a really good challenge for me to get out of my comfort zone. Like a lot of people have these big dreams and like, oh, they hesitate. Oh, can I make this happen? Can I? Last three years, I've had tons of stuff that I wanted to do. Like I wanted to go to Europe and do this and do that. And somehow I pulled it out of my ass to get it done. Like, you know, I go to Magicwood and I can't leave because I have no money to leave. But I'm still in Magicwood, so I mean, I made it happen. So I think people can make their ideas happen if they just do it. <laughs> I don't know how. I don't know how. Oh, I just got back from Europe, so I come home and I'm like, oh shit, I'm home now, what am I gonna do? Like, do, do I have to deal with life now? Do I have to get a job? And I mean, I have a job now, but it's short term. My plan is to try to have a base, which would be Squamish for like four weeks, like a month at a time, and then go somewhere for a month, and then come back and train for a month, and then go somewhere for a month. I mean, that's kind of my ideal. Thanks, Thomasina. 
Good luck with all your adventures and we can't wait to hear what you get up to next. Right, that's it for today. We'll see you tomorrow.